Hey everybody, this is Sam Samsterdam Diter coming to you today with a quick video tutorial about how to use refraction in combination with the normal map to produce some interesting results for your glass materials. So let me go ahead and uh, zoom in here for you. Um, if I look at this piece right in front of me, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can notice that we have refraction going along uh, the top of this surface right here. And as the normal map starts to kick in along the edges, you can see there's a lot of distortion happening that's actually pretty cool and actually extremely easy to set up. And that's what I want to show you guys how to do today. I want to show you how to get the results that you're seeing right here. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I've been debating on whether or not I want to show you guys substance or not, and I figured I might as well just bring it in for the tutorial. So here's how I actually made this texture. I made it in a program called Substance, and if you haven't used Substance before, I highly suggest you check it out. It's a great program for making procedural based textures. Um, one of the many, many advantages of that is that you can resize them without losing any fidelity inside your texture or you can make changes to them very quickly. They offer you a lot of variation and things like that. And just the ability to do that very fast uh, really, really, really helps speed up your workflow. So what I did there is I created a new substance and I dropped in a shape here. And for the shape, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick a pyramid. Now, as soon as I connect this up, you can see why this program can, is as powerful as it is because check this out. When I hit the tiling here, boom, look at that. I got a tiling four by four. I can do 13 by 13, I can do all the way back down to 2 by 2 if I want. And that's super powerful because that means that I don't have to actually rearrange where anything lies if someone comes around and says they want it to, you know, have a stronger tiling or a little bit of a less less tiling or something like that. So that's super powerful. So the next thing I'm going to drop in, I'm going to actually drop in a, uh, a levels node. Levels node is what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to control the kind of the highs and the lows of this much like levels would inside of Photoshop what that's going to do is that's going to increase or decrease the sharpness of my normal map and to turn this into a normal map we're going to need to pull out a couple of nodes here we're first we're going to need a normal mapper node and uh, let's see if that will actually pull out here and come on normal mapper okay for some reason the normal mapper is not and eh, there we go normal mapper decided to finally come out and play so let's hook this up to here and uh, we'll hook this into here and that's looking pretty cool except we have one problem there's alpha in the background and I don't want that I want it to be on a just a blank background so what I'm gonna do is drag out a normal color and a normal combined and I'm gonna take this normal and I'm gonna take this flat normal blue I'm gonna combine them together plug them into my output and now as you can see I have my normal on a blue background and if I come back over here oops, to my levels and I start to adjust them you can see the changes that I was talking about beforehand you see how it's making it a little bit sharper or a little bit less sharp um, let me pull this over just a smidge so that we can see the end here and I can pull this in and you can see it's just making it sharper or less sharp so this is really handy when you want to expose this later on maybe you want to make a substance that an artist can uh, can can adjust uh, individually or something like that so but this is how I made that normal map so very very simple setup like this just these 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 nodes set up like this um, I'll give you guys the textures that we used in this particular example here but I guess the main thing that we're after is probably the material and we're gonna go ahead and set up the material now so I'm gonna make a new material I'm gonna click on my materials and make a new material and we'll call this mat underscore glass underscore zero zero Oh, and uh, I called it class, not uh, glass, so Matt underscore glass. There we go. And uh, we're going to open this up, okay, and uh, I'm just going to dock it up here. So before we get started in setting up the uh, laying down of some material notes, there's some things that we need to set up first. So first off in the blend modes, we want to make this translucent. And we want to come down here to translucency, and in our translucency lighting mode, we want to turn this to surface and surface is going to give us the best lit translucency so we've set everything up that's all you need to set up for that now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit 3 on the keyboard to set down a vector 3 and convert it to a parameter and we're going to call this color okay and now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to whoops not do that I'm going to hit this by 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0.5 and I'm actually going to multiply this I'm going to multiply the color by 
the alpha and that's going to give us a little bit of luminosity control and I'll show that to you in a little while. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting down a bunch of constant parameters. All right, and this first one's probably going to shock you, but I'm going to call this metallic. And uh, we're going to give this a value of 0.5 and we're going to plug it into the metallic slot. Now you're thinking metallic on glass. I know it sounds a little weird, but you'll see what I why I did this when we put this on a material instance. So let's call this one specular. Okay, and we're going to set it to, uh, we'll set this one pretty high because the specular is actually kind of important. Okay, we're going to get another one. This is going to be our roughness. Okay, and we are going to set that at uh, 0.1. Okay, and then let's connect the roughness. Let's get the, oops. Okay, now we need one more. Okay, and uh, this is going to be for our opacity. Okay, and we're going to set that at uh, probably 0.5 opacity. Now what we need to do is we need to pull up two texture samplers. Okay, and we want a we want to combine these together because we're going to have two. Um, two normal maps and we're going to use this blend angle corrected normals because we're just blending two normal maps on top of one another so let's go ahead and find this first normal map and it's actually we pull this over a little bit and I move that over it's called T underscore win and we have zero zero and we have T underscore win zero one okay and that's going to blend both of these together and we want to, uh, we just want to connect this. We're going to go ahead and connect it up to our normal. Okay. Oops. And uh, the recording software is making it a little hard to move stuff around, so I apologize about that. So finally, we're ready for our refraction. Now, I'm going to do something that uh, is very similar, almost exactly the same to how Epic does it. And I think it gives a pretty good result. Now, you could just plug something into your refraction node right here, and it would work just fine. You could give it a value. Uh, an index of refraction that you find on the internet. But what they did on uh, the materials example, which gives kind of a cool effect, is they've actually used a Fresnel. And what they did is they lerped that as the alpha. They used the Fresnel as the alpha between this value and this value, which they turned into a parameter. And this is their index of refraction, their IOR. And since I'm actually doing glass, I know it needs to be 1.53. So we're going to have this is 1, this is our, I'm sorry, this 1 is our A, IOR is our B, and our alpha is the Fresnel, and we're going to put that into the refraction node. Okay, now our material will compile it, and it is ready to be used as an instance. So let's just create a material instance here, create a material instance. Okay, and we're going to just drag and drop that material instance onto the object. And obviously it needs some, some adjusting, so let me open up the material instance and get it so that we can kind of adjust it. I'm going to keep part of it off the screen and I'm going to go ahead and full screen this so that we can see everything here. So first off, let's talk about the, the alpha. So if I put that at zero, oops, I need to actually turn it on. You can see that it makes my object very dark. If I put it back at one, it, it makes it a little bit brighter and I can obviously overdo it crazy like that. It just gives us a way to increase the brightness without having to actually increase the uh, the brightness in the color. So, you know, I like a, a little bit of a, a light gray. We can even go to maybe like a darker gray. Um, you know, maybe something like that or 0 0.5, 0 0.25. Um, the next thing that we need to adjust though is uh, we're going to get here we're going to adjust the specular and the metallic and the opacity. So let's adjust the opacity point of 0.125. That gives us a really nice looking glass, as you can see right there. Um, the specular controls actually how bright that reflection is going to come through. As you can see, it's making it a little bit less and less. And if I actually turn it off, you see I get no reflection whatsoever. So a specular is kind of key to making this whole thing work. Now, you notice that I have metallic. Now, if I turn the metallic off or I put the metallic on, you can see that, hey, the metallic and turning the, the spec off, it's it's almost like having the same thing. Well, even if I put the metallic to zero, you see I've actually disabled all specular by setting all of these values to zero. So the metallic does help add a little bit of ref reflection back in. You can see it right there. But the main thing to add the reflection back in is going to be having a nice specular 
on your object and I still have the uh, the metalness set to one so it's really going to dampen the specular so let's set that at 0.1 maybe 0.25 maybe 0.5 eh, maybe 0.89 yeah um, the other thing is the roughness now a full roughness is going to again get rid of completely rid of my reflections roughness of zero is going to to bring them back you know I could maybe leave this at zero and set this at zero and set uh, maybe this at zero I'm gonna disable all of them maybe I just have these reflections coming on from from putting the map metal to one um, if I put the roughness up I still need however specular so you have to have the specular in order to get this to work that's one of the key things to making this work and then I have my index of refraction um, as you can see as I change it what it does is it just happens to push the pixels down a little bit more and we know that the refraction for grass is 1.53 but the other cool thing about this is that you know you, as as it moves around it moves around very interestingly in the middle but also along the edges and again that's coming from that really interesting normal map that I have put on there and if I come back here let me um, well, I need to get out of f11 for you really quick and if I come here to my textures and we'll just type up the windows you can see uh, right here I have some very interesting detail in this and this detail right here this detail is what is perturbing that surface and giving us that really awesome looking distortion that's going on behind the window and you can use this for all types of different effects don't forget you can even maybe put a little panner through it and put it in some noise for a particle so that's all that I have for you guys today I hope you learned something about refraction if you've got any questions or any comments about this please comment in the video or send me a, a, a private message and I'll do my very best to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.